Okay, so I did a bunch of shorts, and you may have heard about the um, the expansion tank scam that I've been exposing. Um, there's a bunch of people giving a lot of feedback on those because they're shorts. I can't give you the full details and explain the whole thing in in, in totality. So I'm doing a longer video. Trying, still going to try to keep it short. Okay, the reason that they're trying to tell you that you need an expansion tank is that cities are putting in a check valve, which is actually a multi-part piece. Usually it's a check valve with a pressure regulator so that you can actually set the pressure and say pressure inside the home will stay at this amount. Um, and what that does is it's, it only lets water go through one way. And it says, I'm only going to let you through when the pressure on this side drops below a certain point. So if you have it set to 60 and it inside it drops to 59, it lets more water through and keeps it at 60. Um, the reason for it is because the cities were having to deal with the cumulative effect, the huge effect caused by thousands and thousands of homes in a city that would heat up and cause expansion and push back into their system, okay? And then there's also a concern about contamination. Imagine for a minute, forget the fact that all the water's in pipes and you can't screw that up anyway, but imagine for a minute that you have a thousand people with a straw going into a shared margarita and somebody takes a drink of the straw and then they take their mouth off and they, you know, backwash into the margarita. Well, the house is backwashing into their system. Now, the water's still in the pipe. It's not enough to push back too far. You know, okay, whatever. All right. There's contamination concern, whatever. Okay. So they put in the check valve. Now, no water's going back. Now, the effect, the individual effect on a person's home is nothing. It's, it's the tiniest thing. What the the city's dealing with is a whole big pile of sand. You're just one little kernel, okay? That's it, all right? Now, here's what's going on in your home, okay? And this is what's going on in businesses and everywhere else as well. This has already been thought of, what was it, 70 years ago, I think, when they were dealing with the, the pressure? Um, what goes on inside these the home is you have the hot water tank and you'll see them they'll do the scare they empty out the tank and they heat up the water and they show you look the air is compressing and this is what happens and see how much water it's filling up this whole two liter or it fills up two tea liters and this is how much water you're getting and water doesn't compress so it's really building up the psi okay yeah they already knew all about that kind of thing okay and everybody has the you know the 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 urban legend of the water heater exploding. That is an exceptionally so rare thing that ever would happen. Okay, it just doesn't. Not unless there's a material failure. Something goes bad when that happens because the safety on this whole system is out the ear. This is how it works. All right. Every single device, the water heater, your pipes, the the little plastic thing in your in the tank of your toilet that lets water in, the little water flow piece. I even have one on my coffee maker. The water spigot inside your refrigerator, because it gets attached to the plumbing, has to be rated to run at 150 PSI. Okay? That's running. That's normal every day. You're just walking down the street. You're not huffing. You're not puffing. You're just walking down the street type of, of operating. Okay? You've got to be able to move. That's it. 150 PSI. Okay, your explosion level of running five miles at 15 miles an hour to the point where you have a heart attack and pass out on the street. Okay, the explosive point, things like PVC, it's like 600. Even if you were, well, actually, if you're not using Schedule 40, it can be as low as like four. Um, but copper pipes out the ear. Your tank is not going to blow up until it's about 300. Um that's probably one of the lowest level PSI type items. And what they did is because it is the lowest one, they had the pressure and temperature valve. Yes, it does both. It opens up if it gets over boiling point, which is 220 or 212. And it's set to go off at, at 210, I believe, typically. 
and then it's also set to relieve at 150 PSI. So either one of those conditions happens, it does both temperature and pressure, okay? So if for any reason your water heater gets to 150, or excuse me, 120, that goes off. Now think about those two numbers. 150 is normal operating walking around, right? 120, 150, 20% of that, that's 30, subtract becomes 120, your relief valve goes off when you get within 80% of just normal running temperatures and pressures. If you get within 20%, think of your hard drive. If you, 20, if you were getting 20% full, it would automatically go, hey, we need more hard drive space. That's what this thing does is it says, no, if you get within 20% of the pressure for just normal walking down the street, we're going to go ahead and, and relieve it and make sure it doesn't go any higher. On top of that, the standard pressure that they set down at the street, okay, is between typically 60 and 80. They literally aim right about at 60 to 65, and they'll, uh, they'll aim at like 61 or something like that. And that is what's in your house, okay? Again, my house, it's very much the same. I showed you the gauge. It's sitting there at 60, and it doesn't go above 80. Why? Because there's no way in my house, especially in my house, I've got too many people, that I'm going to use up every ounce of water in two water heaters, okay? And then for two and a half hours, the amount of time it takes to heat up that water, okay? Nobody's going to wash their hands, take a piss, the ice maker's going to go off, somebody gets the coffee, whatever. Somebody's going to use some water. Somebody. And every time you use the water, it relieves the pressure and it's not going to add more from the street, it's not going to add more from the city until this pressure is below 60. So you're just going to use up the pressure water. That's all you're doing. And every time you wash your hands, every time you do whatever, so sitting at 80. And yes, I have it sitting on the little valve at the bottom of my tank as I showed you in the shorts. Here's the thing. People say, oh, well, the sediment, it's going to clog that up. Okay, what part of you think that I don't flush my tank do you not understand? I'm over here giving people tips and you think that I don't flush my tank and I let it get corroded. I'm over here showing you that I've got 24 ppm. Yeah, my tank don't get that shit. Okay, I'm very lucky on that sector. I know that there's other people who aren't. So yes, if you're doing this, you should be flushing your tank before you do that little trick of putting a gauge on. Also, one of the other things that I suggest is putting a full flow valve on that uh, release because that way you can actually get it out and 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 do it quickly and just get your job your maintenance done and, and be done with it you know get a full flow uh, valve down there um, also if you break your garden hose just hook it up leave it on the thing that's a nice little trick is then you don't have to worry about it you just walk out to the garage throw the hose out the garage turn the valve open dump some water out however needed based on how bad your water is based on how much sediment you might build up. Leave it open long enough to get that out. Close it, roll it back up, throw it up. Take you five minutes. You're done with your maintenance. Make sure you check that pressure relief valve. This was another thing. So the pressure relief valve is going off at 120. And I'm telling you, during your annual maintenance of flushing your tank that takes five minutes to do, okay, go ahead and pop that relief valve make sure it goes off well then it's going to leak most of them leak yeah it's called standard oxidization corrosion that happens on any kind of metal that's in air okay it happens you get this super thin layer you walk over to a sink and you want to shut the valve and you haven't done it in a year and a half or ever turned off the water to that sink it's sticky it's gonna stick it's the it's just the lightest bit of corrosion you just have to pop past that corrosion now sometimes it's bad enough that it ends up opening up and you can't, you know, it damages it too much to where you can't get it closed again. Replace it, okay? Same thing with this valve. Most of the time, you just have to wiggle it a bit much, wipe off that corrosion, get the corrosion gone, warm the spring up, get that, that relief valve used to being open, close, open, close, open, close. If it's not going off and you're worried about it leaking, here's a thought. Maybe it's because they don't have a pressure problem and don't need an expansion tank. If you can't get it to 120 PSI and you're telling me you're not even getting within 20% of running, running PSI, give me a break.
Okay? I don't want to hear that crap. Don't sit there and do that. Now, here's a big thing for the plumbers. And I'm going to tell you right now. This was one that came up and I saw and it really irritated me because this is exactly a plumber pushing on behalf of the people who, who run the companies and make these products. He's saying they will, it voids the warranty. You're telling me that you want to install a product on a customer's home where they will not warranty their thing to work within specification of 150 when there's already a relief valve that releases at 120, 80%, and they won't warranty it unless I put in some expansion tank thing to drop the pressure all the way down to 45 or 55 or something? No. That tells me you have the shittiest fucking project, product on the market and you have no business selling it. I wouldn't buy it. And if you're a plumber and you take those products... You're in on the scam because you're pushing that, okay? If I go and I'm a plumber and I go to the damn thing and they say, it has, you're going to void warranty without this, I'm going to say, well, then I need to get it somewhere else because obviously your stuff is a piece of shit and can't operate in a normal situation. There are special situations. There's, there's all kinds of different situations where you might need a pressure tank. Someone was telling me about how they get a uh, water hammer from their pump because of the way it works out of their well. That can happen. There's all kinds of different situations that might call for it, but the vast, the very vast majority of people out there do not need it. Anybody in a situation where it's a standard home, standard business, anything like that, anybody who's in a, a, a if you're in a city or, or a, a suburbia area or something like that, Anything like that, unless you're rural, running on a on, on some type of pump out there, no. No, 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 no. Not unless you're doing well stuff, not unless you're doing other stuff. They want to tell me that, yes, okay? I'll go to the farmer's house and say, yeah, you probably need one of these because of your pump. All the rest of the people, no. And sitting there and trying to dictate everything in those cities to work the way it does over here, See, that goes to my 2A thing. Why are you going to tell me that I have to take all the guns away that are absolutely needed to keep the coyotes and whatever out of the fields just because you have crappy cities? It's different areas, different rules. Okay? Don't sit there and try to say you've got to put tanks on everything. Okay? It's crap. So this is how they push that scam. And this is what needs to be done. The simple fact of the matter is, is any plumber who tells you you need it you ask them well what's my PSI what's the highest it pops at okay well you have to do it because if they start giving you those lame fucking excuses okay then they're trying to push it in order to sell the product from the manufacturer and the work to install it they're working together to screw you they're not working to compete for your business that's not capitalism Okay, they compete for your business, that's capitalism. Nope, they're not. Oh, and uh, plumbers, when you sit there and go back and you get into a situation where you go, well, there aren't any other thingies that they have that don't do this. Hmm. So there's no type of competition at all. So there's a monopoly created by a collective agreement of the corporation. So don't tell me it doesn't exist. Push back or get pushed off yourself because I'm going to tell these people all about your little scams. All right, going to go later. Hope this explains more in detail of, of what I'm talking about with those, uh, those expansion tanks. Feedback's welcome. Subscribe if you'd like.